Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, and today I've got an updated Procreate drawing tutorial. Uh, you guys have been asking for one of these for ages, like since I posted my first Procreate tutorial. Um, if you haven't seen that one, I would definitely recommend you go see it because I kind of go into the details about what iPad I use, etc, etc. So uh, this one is more based on the actual, my new process of drawing on Procreate and how I've been doing it recently. So for the drawing today, I've got this little sketch that I did in my sketchbook a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to be using it as sort of the base for today's drawing. I do this a lot. I'll like take a picture of a sketch and then bring it into Procreate create and use it as my template sort of. So going into brushes, I have like a little folder in my brushes called my go-to's and what I do is I just drag and drop all my favorite brushes into here and any brushes that I make. So the first one that I have is like a calligraphy um, inking pen, the second, the, the two second ones are like stamps and I'll show you guys later in the video how I make those. For lining, I use this dry ink one. This is the only brush I mainly use for lining at the, at the time that I'm recording this, like at the moment. I just really love the texture and everything. I also have this like 6B pencil one. I don't really use as much, but I used to. For laying down colors, I use the hard airbrush all the time. It's the best one to like lay down um, colors. The, there's also the soft airbrush as well, which I use a lot for blending. Uh, the Nico Roll Brush is um, one of my all-time favorites since the beginning of Dawn. I love it. It's super textured. It's like a charcoal brush. Uh, and then actually, Shasha, my housemate, got me into this this brush. This is the Bonobo Chalk, is it, if I'm not wrong? Yeah, the Bonobo Chalk. It's so nice. It's got beautiful texture. And then I, I've just got a bunch of random ones, like these pencil... Uh, Narinder pencil ones. Uh, the, obviously the soft uh, airbrush one is great for just like gradients and bl blending and stuff. And then I've got a bunch of different textured ones uh, over here like the bamboo and the reed pencil and I use these for like anything that needs like textured line work sort of like on the edges rather than on the inside. If that makes any sense? And then I've got a bunch of like wet media brushes at the bottom, my gouache, my wet acrylic, and I think it's it's oils, the last one, but I'll double check. And the last one, the Jasinki ink, that's the one. And these are just ones that I use if I want to add any sort of like wet media texture or anything. So those are my go-to brushes, and I get a lot of questions about these, so I hope I cleared them up a little bit. The blending tool over the top I barely ever use, I don't think I really use it, but when I do it's normally in the um, that one at the top, it's like one of the dry media uh, brushes and my eraser is always on the hard airbrush, always. So now going into colours. So after I showed that I went in and just chose a background colour, which I'm obviously going to change later because I never, <laughs> I'm never happy with my decisions. After doing this, I thought I'd give you guys a rundown of like my palettes because um, a lot of you were asking about that as well. So I have this little like pastel palette that I have, which has got all my favorite pastel colors because I love pastels. And then I've got like obviously a skin tone uh, palette and that one is my default one under my color picker. I've got then actually um, a color palette for each one of my OCs so that every time I draw them, they kind of have the same uh, values and colors and everything. And then I've got some random palettes from like color studies that I've done uh, that I never deleted. So those are just there. And those last three come with Procreate, so those aren't exactly uh, my, my creation. Yeah, in terms of like the actual canvas, I don't really remember doing anything about them. Uh, yeah, these are just the dimensions, if anyone's wondering, that I use. I normally go for like the biggest possible dimension, always at 300 dpi, uh, pixels per inch, and uh, just to basically maintain resolution for when you're exporting it, posting it, etc, etc. And yeah, let's get on into lining. I always line my drawings with a black uh, dry ink pencil on a layer above the, there you go, a layer above the sketch, like, template, reference picture, whatever you want to call it. So I kind of obviously put this um, this part in time lapse because it's just me lining this drawing and I love the Jasinki, not the Jasinki, I'm going crazy, the dry ink brush for this because it kind of feels like an actual pencil and I love the texture that it gives and how the pencil works with 
the Apple Pencil, if that makes any sense. I just really love the way it works for me, so that's why I use this one. And I just, I, I don't know, I just like textured line art. I just think it looks a lot more interesting than just some plain line art, if that makes any sense. And I just, I don't know, I like the look it gives my drawings, sort of. Uh, so yeah, I'll go in and I'll just line everything. Uh, I'll obviously, this is where I'll make like a bunch of changes if, if I want to. And um, if I'm not like using an already made sketch for this, I am, and I'm like obviously sketching from scratch, I will use the same pencil to do like the sketch layer underneath this and then add the line art layer on a different layer. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense, but this is when I'm sketching from like a, a reference of another sketch I've done. And yeah, this process is the process that I mainly use for turning little ideas and sketches that I have in my sketchbook into like finished digital art pieces. Yeah, I'm use I use this a lot for especially like my comic that I'm doing right now. I have like a bunch of like ideas sketched out and uh, thumbnailed out in my sketchbook, and then I'll just import them into uh, Procreate and use them as like a base. So with all that done, I get a lot, a lot of questions about how I make my line art colored after this, and it is so simple. So basically what I do is I go into the blending modes uh, on the layer and I turn my line art layer into an overlay layer. And what this does, it basically, it turns uh, the line art into like basically a darker color of whatever color is underneath it. So this is really cool because it basically, it does all the work for you. So whatever color you uh, draw underneath it, it basically becomes just a darker color of that color. And you don't have to go over the liner or anything. And I was just messing around one day and I thought about doing this and I've been doing it ever since. And yeah, that's how basic, how my line art is sort of colored in quotation marks. <laughs> So for laying the flats down, my rule basically is that every time I have to put down a flat for a different item or a different like base color, it's on a different layer. So for example, um, the skin flats is on uh, one layer, and then hair flats are another layer, and then accessories, if they're not overlapping, are on a different layer, and then clothes, etc., etc. And then, actually, one thing that I do is that um, I put eyebrows on a different layer so that it is above the skin layer but underneath the hair layer. And this is mainly so that when I'm shading in the face, I don't go over the eyebrows and then forget to go back in and fix them, which is something that I've done a lot, many, many times. So. By just putting them on a different layer, I just keep them there and they don't, you know, get messed up. So that's basically my rule for creating a new layers for the bases. And the reason why I do them on different layers is that because then if you want to use like clipping masks and stuff like that, it is a lot more easy to identify the layers that it's clipping onto. And I'll go into those in a bit. <laughs> So as I said earlier, the accessories, so her hairband and her um, earrings and stuff are all on different layers. And if you haven't guessed by now, this is like a little fan art drawing that I'm doing of Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Uh, so yeah, if you guessed that, congratulations. But this is a sketch I did of her ages ago and I never went back to it for some reason. And I thought, you know what better time to do it than right now? So yeah, this is me just uh, making the layer for the eyebrows, which is always just kind of like a darker color of the hair. And actually I forgot to mention, but before I filmed this video, I put a little question poll thing on my Instagram asking what you guys wanted me to mention in specific uh, about Procreate. And I got a lot of questions about actual drawing rather than just the Procreate drawing thing. Um, so that's why I'm not really going into those into detail, I'm mainly going into Procreate specific things. 
Basically, after all the flats are done, I'll basically alpha lock each one. So if you tap on a layer and then tap it again, this little menu drops down on the left. And if you click alpha lock, what it does is basically whenever you draw on it on that layer, it only draws within what you've already painted. So basically it just creates sort of like a, a mask. And this is great for adding uh, shading and uh, colors and everything. I alpha lock everything because once I like the, the clean borders that I've drawn for the flats, I basically can just draw within that flat color without worrying about going outside the lines. Um, so that's, that's just a, a really easy hack, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, then I'll go in with my Nico Roll brush and add a lot of shadings. I'll normally go between my Nico Roll brush and like a soft airbrush um, to add flats. It really does depend on my mood. <laughs> I don't really have a strict sort of um, like process for Procreate. I just kind of go for what I'm feeling. If I'm feeling a bit more experimental, I'll I'll work a little bit. I just I'll basically work with like a a flat square brush if I want to make it look more painterly so yeah it really depends and yeah I'll, I'll go in and just add all the the dark kind of mid-tones and then I'll go in with the darker mid-tones and I just keep darkening it so I work in a very like water-based medium kind of uh, process so like watercolors would would work and I go from lightest to darkest on Procreate I don't know why it's probably just because I learned to paint in that way when I was learning how to paint with like acrylics and watercolors so now it's kind of how I'm used to painting but that's how I do it on here as well and I didn't really go much into backgrounds for this for this video because again I'm still working on getting better at backgrounds so I just thought I wasn't very fit for that in this particular video but um, you'll see you'll see what I mean later so after adding all the shadings on the skin tone layer um, if I want to do like any sort of color correction like for example I thought her skin wasn't very saturated and I thought it would look very grayish I'll go into the uh, editing tab and kind of just shift the saturation and the hues and everything uh, and because everything is on the same layer, it works beautifully because it just changes everything uh, cohesively. Uh, I'll obviously then keep going in uh, and adding all the details, like the eye color, which I know a lot of people do on a separate layer, but because I'm lazy, I do it on the same layer as the skin tone because I'm lazy. <laughs> So I'll go in and I'll add the eyes normally at the end because uh, I like to use a bigger brush to add the shadings and normally using a bigger brush it will go over like other areas and that can normally go over like eyes and freckles and stuff like that so I prefer to do the smaller more detailed things at the end once the bigger shades and everything have been applied. So then I'll obviously add the lips and like lip color if there is any and and then of course I'll add the highlights. I'll normally add the highlights with a hard airbrush and uh, I think that's pretty much it for the skin tones. It's I, I didn't go specifically into how I shade and how I draw because that's not exactly what this, this tutorial is about but um, I have some other videos on it if you'd like to go in uh, over through my channel and look at those tutorials. I wanted to make this video more specific to Procreate. Also, I don't know if I touched upon this, but I have this thing that if you just press um, on the screen on a color, that's like the color picker. And sometimes I'll actually, while I'm coloring in, I'll uh, feel like going into the line art layer and tweaking things there. Because sometimes I'll look at it after I've colored it in and actually like, mm, I don't know if I want that line there. So I'll probably go in and like delete or add lines and change the line art while I'm coloring in. And um, because we've done things on separate layers, it just, it's so easy to fix. Also this layer rule, um, it really depends on the style that you're going for because if I'm going for a more painterly style or like a, a study or like a quick sketch, I won't bother with the layers. I'll do everything on the same layer, sort of like a painting would, if that makes any sense. So this is just how I make digital drawings that are meant to look like the digital drawings that you see on my page, if that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, this is my process sometimes <laughs> most times 
So then after I've done that on the skin, I'll go and do the hair and I'll do the same thing that I did with the skin. So I'll alpha lock the base color and either I'll make a clipping mask, which is in the same drop down menu that um, when you click on a layer, it shows up on the left and you can have a clipping mask, which means that everything you draw on that layer will only draw like between the parameters of the layer that's underneath it. I know that this is hard to understand, but it's, it's basically an alpha lock, but you're drawing on a different layer. So now to show you how I make these little stamp brushes, I actually saw this uh, tutorial on the Procreate Instagram page. They have many tutorials on there. So you, what you want to do is save a JPEG of whatever stamp you want, and it has to have a black background and whatever you want to stamp in white. And then when you go to make a new brush, um, you want to go into select shape and you want to insert photo. And then you're going to go into your camera roll, select the stamp drawing you did. And then for the grain source, you want to go into the pro library and go scroll right down until you reach the blank solid that's a square. And don't choose the one that's a circle. You want to go for the one that's a square. And then once you do that, uh, you want to go into the stroke and up the spacing to the maximum and then you want to go to the general preferences and tick stamp preview and that's literally it so then when you go onto your brushes you should have a new brush that has your drawing on it and there you go that's it <laughs> that's how you make a stamp and I do this with my signature which saves me with my like my favorite brush which has texture on it. So basically it just saves me having to sign all my drawings all the time. And you can do this with like shapes. So I did this with like a little star design. So if you have like a specific design that you put on a lot of your drawings and you kind of just want to be able to have it, not have to redraw it every time, then you can mess around when you're creating new brushes and you can uh, change the uh, rotation, the scatter, etc. So now I wanted to kind of also touch upon uh, different blending mode layers. I do this a lot sometimes when working with lighting. So what I mean is if you add a new layer on top of everything and make it into an overlay, like much like we did with the line art, basically if you pick a light color, it makes this. It just basically creates this sort of effect that it, it looks like there's light shining on the, the drawing and I really love this um, sort of effect and I'm kind of working on figuring out how to use this to my advantage because I sometimes do this a lot with my drawings and then I'll just delete it and not use it in the end because I just think it didn't look great but I actually ended up using it for this drawing so yeah for the purpose of this video I'm kind of making it look like there's sort of like a, a door opening behind her and there's like a light coming in from the crack in the door and um, is shining on her. So if you do that on a separate layer, it does it. It does the overlay effect on everything that's underneath it. So like it's a very easy way to add lighting and shading as well. If you are not very comfortable with shading with different colors and mixing hues and diff like darker colors of uh, the same base color. So if you prefer to work with that method and work on the grayscale, this is how grayscale works pretty much. So if you do this with different shades of gray and white and then you make it an overlay layer, it turns into lighting and shadows onto any color you want. I hope I'm making sense. Oh my goodness. But that's personally not how I work with Procreate or any painting really. I, I prefer to mix my own colors and um, lay down the, sh the shadings with my own preferred colors. So yeah, I use the same overlay layer to kind of create some lighting in the background, kind of behind her and stuff. And it ended up looking really cute. I am quite happy with how it looks. And then once your drawing is done, you can go into the time-lapse replay up at the top and look at the whole process. And this is also where you can export your time-lapse video if you have the auto recording on, which you can do in the settings and also where you export it as a JPEG. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.